For me, this is a uh, passion, of course, because I'm a mathematician by training and um, I was really lucky to have really incredible teachers who encouraged me in actually really complicated topics. So sometimes I was not following at all in what was going on, what they were explaining to me, but I really saw that like those were really, really shiny eyes and saying, okay, this group of homology, in fact, are really beautiful. You should learn about them. So this is really something which drives me also when I do it myself. Um, so that year it became when we traveled uh, with a vacation trip to Nepal. And there we did also kind of by chance been invited to a school, um, a lecture. And this lecture brought us a question whether we can do it also somewhere else, right? So that it would be done not in the setup that we travel okay, to Nepal, but we also travel to some other countries and we exchange with the local communities there. Uh, afterwards, when we started to discuss it with uh, our colleagues, my friends, with uh, Mikael, with Delphine, with Nasia, with those people who, with whom we started to build that, we understood that actually we should investigate this because we're all researchers, we can data analysis, uh, do data analysis for that, investigate the capacity of that. And that was the core of how it started to, to, to happen. Surprised, I think, because first it started as completely uh, like a part project, which was an aside, right? So we were doing it in our weekends, nights, we were waking up by calls from Senegal, from Indonesia. But we were really surprised that actually this idea, which was really not so, we didn't really know whether it worked, it worked. And the second thing, which was really also surprising, that it really worked without any additional funding, right? So in a, a additional, like, just drive, just this passion, it was really important and, uh, yeah, and surprising at the same time. The way how it was expected was that it was actually a birth of a network of connected, uh, net, connected scientists around the world. So that was something which was something which was expected. Something which was not expected that there were more and more associations which started to get involved. So we connected to Stitch for India, which connected with Senegali clubs, with Uganda projects. So it started kind of to be like a snowball. And it was like good unexpected, right? And now we also work with them because they do the incredible projects and they know what is needed actually in local science communities. Um, about the work of the Lectures Without Borders, I would say the most in important ingredient is uh, first to get connected in the huge network around more or less, like now already 12 uh, trees around the world. And afterwards, you will be guided either by the community, uh, what to do, how to participate. And then, or you will be able to actually make a lecture straight away. And afterwards, you can decide whether you want to contribute to this community as a coder, to, for example, submit something on GitHub, or like as a data analysis, or as a local community guide, because we are really value contributions from local communities who, with whom we exchange. We don't just come and teach, right? We want to exchange with them. Uh, from all the presentations which I heard, I think that was, well, of course, patience with, of all the people and all the people who present. They, can, they all struggled a lot. Some people were hiding that they were like doing this project. Some people were not telling, I don't know, their, their workplace, what they were doing. But they all managed. They didn't give up. So that was something which was really inspiring.